Hello everyone, welcome to Design Hub. In Design Hub, we provide quality technical content related to the design industry using practical concepts. So, to upgrade yourself please subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. In this video, we will understand about district cooling system. The demand for improved indoor climate and comfort, particularly in offices and commercial buildings, as well as an increase in the usage of heat emitting equipment, are driving the interest in air conditioning. There will be a single central source to replace the local systems found in each building. This will be advantageous for the environment and the economy. A district cooling system, DCS, is a modern technology that consists of essentially a network of insulated underground pipes that distributes chilled water to supply process cooling or air conditioning from a central source to multiple buildings for use in space. A single central source will take the role of each building's local systems. This will be advantageous for both the economy and the environment. Individual users purchase chilled water from the district cooling system operator, rather than installing their own chiller plants. Each building receives cold water from a central source that is distributed through a closed distribution network to provide cooling. District cooling is cost-effective, energy-efficient, and beneficial for the environment. Let's now examine the district cooling system in more detail. A single central source of cooled water in district cooling provides cooling for multiple buildings. This system avoids the need for separate chillers in each building, which conserves energy and reduces the cost of cooling. The water flowing through the building's cooling system exchanges thermal energy with the water flowing through the building's heating system through plate heat exchangers. The area is cooled using air handling units, AHU, and fan coil units, FHU. Nearly all of the building's cold will be efficiently transferred to the top via the heat exchangers. Since each building can use as much or as little cooling as required, chiller size and capacity concerns are unnecessary. The district cooling system offers ease and operational flexibility. Additionally, it permits the use of the same electrical source. Now, let's discuss why DCS should be introduced in modern society. District cooling, which provides both economic and environmental benefits, is the most practical approach for producing and distributing cooling in commercial applications. The environment will gain more from the usage of one cooling unit than from individual production. Numerous huge Freon chillers that use rules must be changed or replaced. Building owners will incur significant expenditures for the conversion or replacement of their cooling equipment as a result of the worldwide phase-out of Freon, which serves as a strong incentive to adopt district cooling services. Due to the reduction in the use of chillers that use Freon at individual buildings, district cooling will therefore be particularly well suited for applications where there will be less Freon discharge. Because of the improved efficiency of big capacity water-cooled chillers, pollutants and carbon footprint have been reduced. Due to the absence of chillers and cooling towers in each building space, there will be less noise production which will eventually benefit us from the noise pollution. Its economical advantages are End users will benefit from space savings at their location with centrally delivered comfort cooling because there is no requirement for a chiller as an investment cost or concern over chiller size or capacity. Operation is also flexible because each building can control how much or how little cooling is needed. Building owners can use the same electricity supplier whilst also providing quiet, vibration-free systems, and operation is economical because issues like equipment redundancy and maintenance are handled centrally. District cooling systems frequently rely on various types of cooling sources. First is absorption chiller. Second is cooling tower and. The third one is thermal energy storage tank. Now, we will see how the thermal energy storage system impacts the whole district cooling system. CES tanks are used in chilled water district cooling systems to store energy. They are insulated and have special internal diffuser systems that allow two bodies of water to reside in the tank during the charging and discharging of chilled water. The thermocline, a naturally occurring phenomenon, is the transition or mixing layer that forms between the warmer surface water and the deeper cooler water in stratified TES tanks. Thermal energy storage is a very effective and dependable approach to store thermal energy since this layer separates the water by temperature and density. In district cooling system, the TES tank is used to store chilled water during off-peak hours, when electricity charges per kilowatt hour are lower. Discharge chilled water through the chilled water network during peak hours, when electricity charges per kilowatt hour are the highest. As a result, the chiller's electrical energy consumption can be reduced during peak load times. This is known as peak load shaving. 
ice can be accumulated during one period, and then thawed, and then used during another time through the use of an ice accumulator or storage tank, which facilitates thermal energy storage. You can buy cooling energy at night or during off-peak times. This indicates that it can be purchased for less in many nations. Now, let's see the process in the TES tank. During on-peak discharging, here hot water from the residency returns to the TES in the discharge mode. The facility is cooled by chilled water circulated from the TES tank while the chillers and related condensing equipment are de-energized. When the primary pump flow exceeds the secondary pump flow, the load requirement is met or exceeded, then the flow is bypassed via the decoupler slash bypass line. The cold water that has been stored floats on top of the returning, warmer, less dense water during the discharge phase. In order to make buoyant forces prevail over inertial effects, water is supplied and removed from storage at low velocity, in virtually horizontal flow. The cost of electrical energy is higher in some countries during peak load, that is midday. Thermal energy storage tanks will be used in such scenarios to reduce peak load. Now, let's see the process in the TES tank. During off-peak charging. When the cooling load requirement seems to be lower, especially in the evening, more chillers are activated, and excess primary flow is diverted through the decoupler line. The tank will mostly be filled with warm water after the discharge process is finished, and the charging mode can begin. Warm water is taken out of the tank during the charging phase through the top diffuser, transported to the chiller plant, and then returned cool water through the bottom diffuser after being chilled by a chiller system. One cycle of thermal energy storage is finished at that point, and the tank is once more prepared to be emptied during the on-peak cooling mode. In the next video we will study further about TES tank and DCS. Thanks for watching. Until then learn and grow.